Hello, my name is Calvine, and welcome to my builder diary. Um, sorry. I am playing on a world that I have been working on with a couple friends, and I'm mostly just going to be recording myself building because I actually want to have a log to look back on and progress, like, or see my progression as a builder and be like, oh, so that's how I used to do things, and also just so I can see what I did in case anything ever gets destroyed or blown up. I, like, I don't know what might happen. Some people on the server are dirty crime boys, possibly myself included, and I'm always slightly afraid that people are going to blow something up. So, I want to make sure I can see everything that's going on before and after, and how it was, how it will be, so I can make it anything that gets destroyed happen again. And I've been playing on here for a while. I've only made this small little house. As you can see, I'm not a massively talented builder, but I do things that seem to me to be builder-esque things, like throwing in random woods. I don't know how actually accurate that is, though. And throwing, like, cracked stone and all that. We still don't have vines, so I can't exactly do moss stone. But yeah, got my little cat Cedric over here. Yeah, I uh, want to make sure I don't lose everything in the case of, say, a big ol' explosion. Which, for the sake of this, I'll just throw something down here. Hello, zombie. Actually, will this even... Yeah, yeah this will reach the bottom. More like. Yeah. But as you can see, probably... I've gone around on this world and already done a bunch of stuff like getting resources, hence this giant pit, or getting armor and stuff, hence my armor and weapons and tools. And so that's basically just because I don't want to be making a series of Minecraft videos where it's just the typical Minecraft game. I want to make a series of videos dedicated solely to building, solely to building, because I want to be able to build much better because I'm going to be playing on this world. I plan to play with a couple other friends that aren't on this server in the future, but I want to be able to actually feel like, oh, I know how to do stuff when I plan those. So yeah, right now I'm just going to go and like give a little tour of the world as it is right now. You can see the server owner Oz's little area. Me and him made this little, uh, was it communal enchanting table at the beginning of the world. You can see Oz has this lovely little cabin. Look at this. Got Oz's little pet fro fox. I don't... Arion? 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 I don't know. But oh my gosh. Oz, I have not seen a lot of this stuff. Oz has decorated this place up nicely since the last time I was in here. Got Eternity Served Cold. Yield Whoop-Ass. And Encore, of course. Oh, I could... Mm, Not yet. Not yet. But, more than that, you can see out in the distance, uh, Eli doesn't play a whole lot, but there's his house over there. And further on, to look more at Oz's creations, you got the OG mob farm on the server. It's a spider spawner that he found pretty early on. And you can see, it's just kind of a... Hold on, let me see if I can mine in there. I actually haven't looked inside here. I haven't actually seen how he made this. Oh, it's really it's really a simple thing, thing huh? Yeah. It just takes spiders, brings them over here, and brings them up here. I think it's more efficient to just mine these two out and kill them in here, though. Because they don't really go up there until there's a few already lodged in there. But yeah works pretty good and then of course following on this way you can find you can already kind of see it oh, a little bit of a gap Oz's stage a little theater stage oh and there's a little bit of a seating area in here too hope that I'm not spoiling anything, Oz has been streaming the creation of this stage, so I don't want to accidentally be like, 
ooh, look at all this stuff that you shouldn't be able to see yet. Uh, actually, it's fine. No one's going to be able to see who cares about Oz's uh, progress, I think. I think this is going to be pretty niche, so definitely smaller than his streams. But yeah, you can see there's this big stage up here. I believe if you go down to the side here, yeah, I think it also connects over there. There's a bit of a green room with a whole bunch of posters and advice stuff. You know? I, d I don't understand a whole lot of this. I think a lot of them are shows that Oz has performed back in high school, but... Hold on. Let's see. I, I really just don't understand this, but hopefully if y'all ever want to go watch Oz's streams, I would highly recommend them at Dreamwalker Live, twitch.tv. Um, but yeah, I'm one of few, or one of many players on the server so far. Ah, I don't know. How many are actually on here? Oz, me, Kenna, Ani, Eli, and Seventh, I believe, are all the people. So you got to see um, Oz's stuff. Eli's shack. I'm not sure if there's anything much besides what's already out there, so I'm going to skim over that for today. But yeah. And instead, I will move on to showing Ani and Kenna's little area. I don't know where Seventh lives, per se, so I'm just going to kind of skim over that, too. Let's go over here and see. I actually, I really love this little area. It's so, really, it's very charming. You got their little commune shack with the fence gates that really annoy me but it's whatever got oh my gosh so many more dogs than i remember there being the bone doggies a little fishing area beds and then all this stuff this really really pretty little plant area i think this might become an enchanting table i'm not sure but like yeah you got little bees you got flowers, you got this huge chicken. Oh, I turned my I turned my mob sounds off oh, when I started recording. I'm probably just gonna set it to 10 now because the mobs around here get really loud, especially over by my home base. But yeah, you got the bees, you got plants, you got all that jazz. And it all just like, it's a very charming little pathway over here. Yeah. And this all, of course, leads back to my current mountain base. I think... Ooh, I don't know. Oh, that was actually pretty good. But I need to, for one, remake these staircases. You saw the other staircase over there a little moment ago. And it is not pretty. It's just a staircase. So I want to do something better with that. But the big thing is I want to make this little clearing area into a castle that is my big goal and so to help me do that i've been mining out that chunk little area see here all the stone stuff i can get all the stone stuff i've been gathering related to that um yeah my goal is to make a castle so i guess that is what i'm gonna be working on i think i actually hold on this is probably not the greatest thing I have no actual like physical plans for how I'm going to make a castle. I've made castles before in creative mode, but this is a lot larger than a building area I'm used to, and also survival. So I think my first order of business should be making a front gate wall over here. I want it to dig into this hill right here. Like, I want there to it to like divide this right in the middle here. So, I'm I'm also not going to actually dig out and fill that in. So I'll just place down like an idea of how I want it to go, and then uh, make it prettier later. I think. Let's see. So, if I go in here I'm definitely gonna have to like clear out some area over there let me see can I just throw up 
some stuff right here. I'm also, I'm not going to make you watch everything as I go, but I am going to like, I'm going to want to keep recordings of this. And two, I'm going to just show everything that I think is important to see at like the beginning and like processes all that jazz. Let's see, this is 430Y or 430Z. So that would be right here. But yeah, I'm not going to force you to watch anything that I think is not at all interesting to watch. But I am kind of I'm kind of liking this. Look at that. It kind of digs in there and then it'll go up and over. Yeah, I think that could be very nice. Oh boy. I don't know. 3 wide or 4 wide. I feel like 3 wide is too small, but it's also an odd number, which is nice. I'll do four wide for now because I can always just make it merge into a three wide later. Yeah, that is looking good. So I am going to work on just shaping up a wall around here for a bit and come right back to you. BRB. All right, it's been about a day since I recorded the last uh, section. I got a bit done, but then I logged off for a while just work on homework and all that jazz for college but now we have hold on that there we go um basic walls very plain walls so they need detailing i need to do something about gates for the front pieces oh i didn't even realize there's still more pieces right there i need to get but i yeah I finished that up. I moved this gate one to the left here so that there would be an odd number of blocks between here. And I went up. I wound up going all the way to the wall on this side and not all the way to the wall on this side. So there's a bit of a nice front, like in the wall type looking. But yeah. I wanted to just record that to give an update and to show while I was off last night, two of the people in the server, I guess, either left me a present or took something from my house. So Oz left me a jack-o'-lantern and Ani, I guess, took one of my saddles, which I don't really mind since I'm not using them. Honestly, she could have taken one of the armors as well, but yeah, just wanted to give that quick update and I am going to hop into working on the detailing. And after several hours of silently building. Yeah, I kind of like that more with like squareness there. All right, let's see. Nope. All right, so. Right now, I'm just focusing on outside appearance. Let's see. Do, do. All right, so if we assume that's going to be the top of the wall, then. Let's go up there. Wait, do I have more blackstone? I might need to go grab more blackstone. Let's see. Yep, I need more. Sorry, I had to uh, answer some questions about Dungeons and Dragons. Oops. Whoop! 
didn't realize you were here. Hello, sir. Sir, this is a Wendy's. Alright. Blackstone. Yeah, one of my friends was asking me why his new dice set, he got a new dice set for Dungeons and Dragons, he wanted to know why it came with four d6s, and I had to tell him the whole, uh, using four d6s minus the lowest value when you're rolling up a character stuff. I don't think he's ever rolled up a character, he's only used the, uh, point buy system, so... that up real quick. But yeah. He didn't know how the uh how the whole one dying rolling up a character system works, so I had to give him the rundown on that. He's hoping on uh DMing the game soon. I, I hope that he's gonna be uh okay. I've been playing a campaign with a friend who doesn't let anyone roll their own dice, which is fine since it helps keep people oh didn't realize keep people accountable during the uh campaign if they can't roll their own dice and all that but the issue is we also never see the values of our own dice and that's kind of like ooh, that's part of the fun of the game is being able to see what's on your dice and also like this is only the thought of me and one of the other members of the party actually but um, we both think that'd be super cool to be able to see our own dice and see our own scores whenever we roll something because, uh, I don't know, it gives us a little bit more of that, ooh, was how close was I to succeeding if I failed or how well did I succeed if I did succeed? Like, I don't know, it's just a little bit of that like itch for seeing how we did on this completely luck-based thing, but it's still, it's like, it's scratching that itch. But uh, we also have people in our party who are like, Oh, but it's cool to not be able to see the dice, and I can understand that. It's like a, uh, what's it called? Um, words escaping my mind. Um, hold on, I will figure it out eventually. Um, immersion. Immersion. It's an immersion factor, where it's like, oh, if I don't know, it's like, uh, real life or something if I was really in the game where I can feel more immersed and like see how I would have uh, actually rolled I'm also I'm trying to figure out how to DM so I hope that at some point I will be able to just get some players together and run as a campaign I have a couple of people who I have in mind already from my current session including our current DM who doesn't intend on playing until after our current campaign is done but it is what it is. Yeah. Hopefully that'll go fine. I have plans to DM some one shots with some of the people from our campaign, just because like I feel like that's good practice. I should also know I have not actually DM'd before. I've never DM'd before. And I've only ever played what is essentially 4E. And I do not enjoy 4E. Like I, it's probably bad to say, like, I don't like it, even though I've never actually played anything else, but I've done a bunch of research stuff recently on 5e just to see how I feel about running a game in 5th edition instead of 4th edition, and it's just like, oh my gosh, this looks really lovely. Like, I don't know, I'm not a huge fan of the whole encounter and, uh, what is it, at will system in 4e, so I'm kind of, I'm kind of pumped about the idea of playing in a game where that isn't a huge factor, but I still don't really know, ooh, am I going to be able to run a campaign that's my first campaign and also have it be not in the uh, in the system that I'm used to? So I guess it's going to be a uh, we'll see type of deal. I don't know. Let's see. What can I do there to help break?
wake up the like monotony um let's see what do i have on me that i could use i guess i could try using these like connecting them to that let me see how that looks this is how i build by the way i don't actually have like a solid concrete plan when i start building i just do like Mm, what would look all okay, I guess. Let's see. Two, three, four. The counting game. I love the counting game. Everyone else hates the counting game, and they should because it sucks. Alright, let's clear this up and see what this looks like. I remember a time when I could only dream about the idea of pillaring with this block. How's that look? Honestly, I feel like with something on top of that, that would look kind of good, though. Like, with the rim of the top layer, that would look kind of good. I'm going to keep that for now. If I think it doesn't look good later, but it kind of, like, it has that feeling of a little bit of an archway there, you know? Like, not quite because of how square it is in reality, but, like, it kind of has that going in, like, I think it's just because of the angle, too. It has a little bit of a mirage of it going in, and because there's, like, the gap in the space, or between the, uh, fences, it kind of looks like it goes up a little bit more. I like it, I like it. That added way more texture than I thought it was going to. But I also probably should put in actual texturing stuff up the top, near the top. So, let's head up there. And throw some stuff down like that. All right, texture has been added. Make sure there's nothing I dropped. Whoops, whoopsie, whoopsie, whoopsie. All right, how's that looking? Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. Ran there, it's not quite random. You got that like staircase there. It almost feels like it's a pattern, but I like it. I like it. Cause sometimes a pattern is a random result of random chance. All right, this wall is looking really good. I forgot there's also this side though. I'll do this side later at some point, but for now I'll get, I'm gonna focus on the interior just because there's actually like more going on there, you know? Hmm. Gotta figure out what's gonna go up there. I feel like that, that can just be plain across the top there and then it can go up to the top of the wall. The greatest gift, a light in the dark. Thank you, Oz. Very nice. Let's see. I don't know what I want to do with that staircase. I feel like I kind of want to have a tower start here and then have it go diagonal into another tower over here. That will, like, maybe like a wall tower sort of thing that'll wrap around to a tower right here that'll be like a nice fanciful tower that'll have a lookout over here because i want to be able to see over into ani and kenna's area if i have the render distance to do so then i'm gonna have it come in and back in a little bit go across go across come in again go across go across this is going to be a very large castle not giant but like very large I don't know what I'm going to do with the quarry here. I feel like maybe it could be used to make like a large tower that goes down into a dungeon in the center here. I don't know. It's all going to be very strange once it's all done. I have a couple things I need to put underground, like farms and... Uh, what was it? Like, like automated farms. I want to have an actual farm field a little bit into this plane, not encroaching onto... Uh, Ken and Ani's territory, but more like towards that center area, I think, where the other staircase goes. 
I'm I feel bad for capitalizing so much land, but also like that sounds so cool. Yeah. Eventually this will be all walled within and I won't have to look at any unorganized, natural, smooth looking textures that make me think, oh, this was naturally generated. Cool. I like how it looks. I won't have to look at anything like that anymore. I'll just be able to look at oh, stone walls. Just just these types of stone walls. It's all just gonna look like this. I guess like this. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> The end. I've been kind of talking to more about like actual stuff towards the end here, but I think, all right, I think I'm gonna leave it at this for now with the amount of detailing I've done so far. I'm gonna call it good and end the recording here. So if you ended up watching this, thank you so much for listening to me ramble about Dungeons and Dragons and watching my slow slow process at building all right peace out